What's up guys, Synapse here, and today I'm going to talk about how to have powerful interactions. Now more than ever, women have an insane amount of dating options. They're going to meet guys through work, through their social circle, through Tinder and dating apps online, even Instagram, Facebook, um, through events and parties, and even down walking down the street in bars and restaurants, in clubs, women are approached constantly, especially very attractive ones. Okay, now chances are most of the time, most of her life, she is going to date somebody who she has known for a little bit of time, right? And, and often in a social circle situation or a work situation, there is some context there. So she meets this person and they have time to expose themselves to that girl, that the guy and the girl have time to build a connection, right? So how are you or I, through cold approach, going to make a more powerful impression, one that conveys ourselves more truly, more honestly, and more powerfully in a short period of time than those other guys are, right, over a longer period of time? And the way that you do this is by having more powerful interactions, which I like to think about as having espresso shot game, okay? Espresso shot game basically just means cutting away all of the unnecessary bullshit out of your interactions so that you come across more powerfully and more potently as yourself faster than average guys, all right? And this includes really high value guys that she might be meeting because even a really high value, really cool guy with tons going on in his life is going to have a lot of barriers to his own mindset when he's meeting a attractive girl, right? People, when they first meet each other, especially if there's some romantic interest involved, they aren't completely expressing themselves honestly, right? On one hand, they want to please the other person, they want to have a generally uh, positive impression on the other person, right? They don't want to like bring out all the skeletons from their closet, and they want the other person to like them, right? And on the other hand, they are themselves nervous and worried about how they're coming across, right? This is compounded by the fact that not only the guy, but also the girl are having a lot of things go through their head about how they want to present themselves to the other person, right? Obviously, a girl wants to present her certain image, a guy wants to present his certain image, and that may or may not be super aligned with who they are as a person. You can think of this as um, people's Facebook personality, right? Obviously on Facebook, people are gonna only show the best sides of themselves, um, except for, you know, we all know those, those people who are like, why did he leave me? I hate guys that blah, 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 or whatever. You know, there's always those people, but for the most part, on Facebook, on Instagram, on social media, people are trying to present the coolest, best possible version of themselves, right? On top of that, when you meet someone, it's commonly expected that you go through this pattern, this pattern routine of the common questions, the basic information that you need. You can think of this as your social resume or your business card of socialization, right? You can think of this like, what is your name? How old are you? Where are you from? Why did you come to Japan? All of these kind of basic questions are what people talk about in the first few minutes of the interaction. Most people know or at least think that they should avoid certain topics of conversation. You know, there's always those lists, I don't know what the things are, but it's like religion and, and um, politics and all those things that they should avoid. The idea, the general consensus among pleasant society is that you should limit your initial conversation with somebody so as not to put them off and not to offend them. In other words, you should play it safe, right? You shouldn't be too wild and over the top, too crazy in a way that they might dislike you from the beginning, right? In other words, what most people do, right, and what 99% of guys do when they meet women is they water themselves down. Right, so rather than being potent, real, blunt, honest, and powerfully expressing themselves in that moment, they water themselves down. Both guys and girls water themselves down to such a degree that it's often common for people to not have sex until the second or third date, right? Now, why is that? 
right? Well, people say that they need time to get to know each other, right? Why do they need so much time to get to know each other? Because they aren't presenting the real version of themselves. You can think of like the first hour of conversation, the first date, the first two dates maybe, the first three dates depending on who you are. It's all filler. It's all meaningless communication, right? They're not cutting down to the core of who they are and who the other person is, right? So maybe by the second date, maybe by the third date, both people feel, oh, I actually know this person. I feel like, you know, we relate well together. I feel like they understand me. But that all, it's not a function of time. It's a function of how expressive you are and how deeply and how quickly and intuitively you can understand the person in front of you as well as express yourself, right? So the essence of game is to take that watered down longer version of interactions and just cut away all the fat and bullshit until you make a condensed, powerful, espresso shot version of yourself and then you convey that to people, okay? In five minutes, how can you create a more powerful and more real impression of yourself on the girl than some guys who have a date or two dates or three dates or even who have been around them in their friend circle for years, right? Let's go through five concrete examples, five steps, five areas in which you can improve and cultivate your espresso game. First. Avoid like the plague, the pattern, okay? You all know what I'm talking about. You all probably do it to some degree or another when you meet somebody new, all right? So I'm talking about those first 10 questions, maybe even more, that people ask each other just automatically as if they're zombies repeating uh, the same CV or resume of their themselves to other people when they first meet them. Write down those 10 questions, at least the, the first 10 that pop in your mind, you know, what, what, what's your job, why are you in Japan, those kinds of things, and come up with interesting answers to them that are unusual, okay? So, why did you come to Japan? I came here to eat the tuna, right? Or, this is where they kicked me out of the airplane, right? Okay, these are somewhat ridiculous, but way more interesting than just factually answering, all right? You're setting the vibe, you're setting the fun of the interaction right from the beginning. She's getting a sense of your personality, not whatever sort of automated response you have, okay? Next, whenever you ask her a question, instead, just flip it into an assumption or a statement. So rather than asking her, what's your job? Just take a guess, just be like, you must be a fashion designer, okay? It helps if it's a qualified guess, if you have some sort of basic idea, oh, you know, based on this or this, this X or Y, she must be this or this, based on whether she has nails or not, she must be this or this, her hairstyle, her clothes, what time of night it is, what she's doing. Use the information available to you, but barring that, just take a wild stab, right? It can be something totally random as well. You must be a lion tamer. Okay? Doesn't matter. The point is, assumptions are more powerful than questions. So, break out of the pattern by any means necessary. And you don't even have to answer a question. You can totally just switch the entire mode of the conversation. Jump to something better, something more content-rich, okay? So, escape the pattern interactions. Number two is get real faster, okay? Don't worry about offending somebody. Get out there. Talk about what you really want to talk about. Show an interesting side of yourself, even if it might put some people off, all right? Because the type of people who are going to be interested in that, respect that, are going to be the type of people who are best suited for you anyway, all right? So rather than wasting everybody's time with some really, really watered down conversational generally pleasant conversation. Just get to the heart of what really interests you and what is interesting about the world in general. Be a seeker of beauty, a connoisseur of excellence, right? Dig down into the person in front of you and expose yourself bare to the world. If you have skeletons in your closet, take them out, dance with them, tango with them, throw them on the girl, pull them back. <laughs> It's all good, all right? Don't worry about showing a certain side of you, presenting that perfect Facebook image, or Instagram image. Just let it all hang out. The more you can do this, the more real you can be. It comes across as if you're a very honest, confident, secure person who's aware that they may have some vulnerabilities or some weaknesses, but 
your awareness of those vulnerabilities actually makes you stronger compared to somebody who papers over them or tries to hide them for later, right? Now this goes the other way as well. So if, for example, you are extremely wealthy or well-off or if you're really athletic, right? Rather than leading with that, rather than being like, do you want to check out my abs or like dropping stacks of cash for whatever to buy her something to, to use that as a way to get her attention, let those good things come out later. When she finds that out later, she'll be like, wow, she'll be like, why aren't you like all the other guys who tried to win me over by flashing cash or by showing me their sick bod or whatever it is their best point that they've decided it is, they usually jam it in the girl's face right from the beginning. Why didn't you do that? that you know, that seems really secure. That seems high value and impressive. So this is at the core of expressing yourself honestly, right? Getting real faster. So not saying X or Y because you think it might impress her, not hiding, you know, Z because you think it might put her off or it might show a weak side of you. Just lay it all out there as it comes up or as it's relevant in the conversation and trust that it's going to... <laughs> Just lay it all out there as it's relevant in the conversation and trust that it's going to present, it's going to be the best side of you. It is going to be a powerful interaction that, while not perfect, is at least real and at least honest and meaningful. And in this day and age of spam interactions, she's going to value the fact that you lead with honesty and realness first, right? It's going to be able to, you know, if you think of your email inbox, you can probably at a quick glance be like, well, all of that is spam and maybe there's value later on in the conversation or maybe there's value in that company or whatever, but most of it's just spam, I'm not going to deal with it. But if somebody takes the time to address something personally and honestly to you, you're probably going to read that, pay attention, maybe reply to that email, right? In the same way, when you're talking to somebody, especially through cold approach, especially on the street or in a club or something like that, people have a very short time to make a decision. Is this person spam or is this person valuable, relevant, you know, expressing themselves in an interesting way? Should I devote my attention to this person or not? And people decide this very quickly. So if you're coming in with some watered down general approach, she's going to be like, nah, I already have enough of that, right? I've got plenty of that back at home and in all of the other places I'm meeting guys. I don't need any more of this watered down stuff, right? If you come up to her with espresso, bam, right? Now, she might not be the kind of person, she might not be a coffee drinker, right? But if she's a coffee drinker, does she want some really watered down coffee? Or does she want something that's real, true, fresh, ground, straight from the Congo or Bolivia or wherever, right? Real coffee, right? Powerful. So you want your impression to be powerful, right? Now, maybe you're not coffee yourself. Maybe you're lemonade, right? Maybe you're whatever, but she doesn't want... The point is, she doesn't want a weak-ass version of you. She wants the real version of you, and that will make you more compelling, more attention-grabbing, and stick in her mind longer than coming up with a watered-down version of yourself. So get real faster. Three, cultivate congruence, okay? You can think of this problem in the perennial issue of nice guys, all right? Guys who try to slip in under the radar of friendship and then all of a sudden be like, suddenly like, I have a penis, right? <laughs> or get frustrated, or worse, just never make any moves at all, okay? You think this is very strange, right? They actually want to hook up with the girl, but they're not congruent with their desires, right? They don't make any movements towards that. They're not tr trying to hide it almost as if it's a secret, as if it's something to be ashamed of, or as if it's something they can't express or can't tell her, all right? Uh, another way this might manifest is in super indirect game, which I really don't like at all, right? So, you know, a guy going up and be like, Where's the Starbucks, right? And the girl's gonna be like, uh, it's over there. And then you're like, by the way, I have a penis. And she's like, ah, why did you trick me with this weird other subject to get me to stop and talk to you? That's crazy. Stop that if you do that. <laughs> or here's another one. Ask your female friends how many times guys will just sit next to them and not say anything or stand really close to them and not say anything in an empty subway car or whatever, right? Sounds creepy, right? Why is it creepy? Well, it's creepy because they're trying to hide their intentions or they don't feel comfortable coming out and just talking to her. It'd be much less creepy if that guy was just like, hey, you know, I just saw you standing over here and that seems really 
X or Y seems really interesting about you, so, you know, talk to them normally, all right? That's much less creepy than just, like, positioning yourself near them and, like, just kind of lurking, right? So, cultivating congruence is incredibly important, and you can think of this as, you know, your thoughts, words, and actions are all pointing towards the same thing, right? This is good because it gives her a sense of who you are, a real sense of who you are. Where does this creepiness stuff come from? Well, way back in the day, right? Caveman times, right? You would have to assess what somebody's intentions are very early, you know, otherwise they might kill you, they might do, you know, whatever they want. You have to be able to determine, is this person a threat or not? Does this person have ulterior motives? Or are they trying to do something, you know, that's not right? Are they trying to, or, or are they legit? Are they honest or sincere, right? You want to have all of your thoughts, words, and actions aligned. Now, this can be a bit difficult for new guys, especially, you know, if you've lived your whole life being a nice guy and, and trying to have pleasant conversations and just generally placing yourself near women and hoping for the best because if you start bluntly asserting yourself or start coming out and being like, oh, I'm a man and I have needs and I have desires, right? Being more honest to what you're actually thinking inside, you know, sometimes the girls can be like, feel a little bit incongruent because you've been that person for so long. You're so used to being that person who's hiding his own masculine feelings or desires that it can be a little bit incongruent when you're trying to assert yourself more, right? But that's part of the stretching process, right? And, you know, when you want to stretch yourself to be more congruent, be more assertive, be more confident, be more dominant, it takes a little bit of time for you to grow into that, okay? You can think of, like, you know, a, a snake shedding skin and then growing into the new one, or a hermit crab shifting shells into a bigger shell, right? There can be a little bit of growing periods and adjustments, right? So you do want to make sure that you are as congruent as possible, right? Now, if you're some the kind of person who has trouble telling a girl that they're cute or trouble asking a girl out on a date, you may want to do this as an exercise, right? To be like, hey, I would like to take you on a date and be very specific, be very clear with your terminology as a way of making sure your thoughts and what you're saying, what you're feeling, and what your actions are, are all aligned, right? And even if she may be like, mm, that's a little bit forward or something, she will respect you for the fact that you're saying it, right? Then ultimately the best way to go about it is to be a little bit more subtle, but it's still congruent because everything is coming across through the vibe, right? Ultimately you won't need to say anything, you'll just be like, let's hang out, right? And she will understand through all of your actions, all of your vibes will be screaming through her, to her, louder than any words you ever might say will, so that she knows already what's happening. If you're meeting up, she's not confused about what's going on, right? <laughs> okay? So, ultimately, you're at the point where you don't have to say anything, but in the short term, you might have to be a little bit more direct, a little bit more blunt about it, right? Cool. So, cultivating congruence. Four is be present, okay? Be 100% in the moment, all right? People are so bad at this these days, right? They're on their phone, they're worrying about what they're gonna do tomorrow, they're worrying about what happened yesterday, they're not paying attention to the person in front of them, okay? They're worried, is she, does she like me? Is she interested? Is she busy, right? Just look at the person, talk to her, be present, for her, be there with her in communion, all right? Now, I know that sounds really easy, but in reality, most guys have a th million things swimming through their head when they're talking to a beautiful girl. The more that you can get rid of all of that, have silence in your mind, and just calmly talk to the person in front of you, the better off you'll be, the more of these other things are going to happen naturally, being congruent, being spontaneous, being funny, being confident, leading the interaction. These are all going to happen a lot easier if you're not worried about like, is she meeting friends? Is she gonna reject me? Does she like me? Um, I just ate that, I'm feeling a little bit bloated. And what about that other girl? She reminds me of my ex. And like, what about my friends? I'm meeting them in 30 minutes. What happens if I just cut that entire inner, inner monologue out talk to the girl and see what happens. Just see what happens, all right? So being present, not worrying about things in the future, not dwelling on things in the past, right? Just 
in the now. And finally, make the moves, okay? The easiest way to communicate your intentions to a woman is to make the moves, right? Now, whether that is talking to a girl you see, right? As opposed to thinking about that like guy who will just sit next to her on the subway without saying anything, but really he wants to, just talk to her, right? Just talk to her. Just grab yourself by the balls and talk to her. If you pass a girl on the street, you make eye contact, or even you don't, you know, you're like, oh man, I would really wish I could just talk to that. Just go do it. Just go do it. It's that easy. It's that easy. She might not like you. She might like you. It's so like espresso shot you a lot better than watered down you, but you never know until you try, right? Talking to a girl for a couple minutes, she's got to go or you've got to go. Just get the line. Ask for the line. Go for the line. Let's become friends. Exchange it, right? On a date, wondering, uh, is she gonna, does she, does she like me? Does she want to come home with me? Is she, is it, is it gonna happen tonight? Don't worry about it. Just try it, right? Let's go to the next place. Walk to your house, walk to the hotel, go inside. If she's like, wait, wait, I'm not comfortable, we'll be like, why, right? Are you all right? Like, is everything okay? Figure out, just try. Just try, just make the move. If it's success or failure should not enter your mind, right? Because success or failure does not come until you take the shot first, right? You can't be like, you know, if you were a basketball player and you would just spend all your time dribbling and wondering, is it gonna go in? Is it not gonna go in? Is it gonna go in? Is it not gonna go in? And you just dribble for your whole basketball career, that makes you a pretty bad basketball player, right? But if you miss tons of shots and if you eventually start making more shots, Pretty soon you'll be making a lot of shots and you will be a success. I think Kobe Bryant, right before retiring, he set a record for the most missed shots, like most shots missed in his career or something. Does that mean he's not a great basketball player? No, because he's, you know, he's all time great, all right? Take the shot, make the move, take action, all right? That's number five. These five things, if you really focus on them, it's going to make your watered down interactions, short, concise, powerful, to the point where a very short interaction, even just five minutes or even really shorter, right? 30 seconds can be so powerful that it leaves, plants a seed in her mind, right? She's like, wow, who was that person who came up to me and expressed himself so, so real, you know? So honestly, when so many other people, when I meet them, they're all full of pretenses or trying to show me or trying to impress me or, or saying the same pattern, same boring pattern. Who was that guy who came up and really made a powerful impression? And that is how you hook more girls faster, how you get more dates, how you ultimately sleep with those dates faster, and how you get into really beautiful, meaning relationships in a shorter period of time. And this is how you can beat out guys who she's meeting through her social circle and has lots more exposure to. Espresso shot interactions.